Right, we are in the middle of festival season. We have lots of amazing, lovely festivals coming up, whether it's Diwali or Christmas, New Year and so on. I thought I'm going to do some special recipes that you can cook any festival, any weekend or weekday if you have the time to enjoy with your family and friends. And I'm going to start with my absolute favorite chole. Now, just like chicken curry, I've shared absolute amazing amount number of chicken curry recipes on my channel here and they are all different because the ingredients are different the way that it's cooked is different so the end result is different and just like that i have shared a few chickpea recipes as well quite a few chickpea recipes but a few like proper punjabi chole recipe and today's recipe is another version of chickpea curry or chole and this one is from my book chetna's indian feast i had to bring this book out now that it's festival season is the perfect time to be using it so i am making this loveliness. I am not going to be using tin chickpeas because according to me you can't make proper chole with tin chickpeas. You just can't do it because the overnight soaked chickpeas are the real thing. But if you want to give it a go with tin chickpeas, don't do it. <laughs> right before I start, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button. Let's get cooking. So here are the dried chickpeas. I'm using 400 grams of dried chickpeas and I'm going to soak them in 1200 uh, ml of water it could be a bit more or less it doesn't have to be exact just so that the chickpeas have enough water to absorb and soak and then i'm just going to cover and leave it to soak overnight so i'm going to add two black tea bags two to three black cardamom pods i've got a teaspoon of salt in here And the last thing is a quarter teaspoon of bicarb of soda and that is just going to help it cook quickly and I'm just going to get this on the hob. I'm not closing my pressure cooker as you can see it's too full so I'm just using it as a pan and I'm going to bring this to a boil first. So now that we've added the black cardamom tea bags, bicarb of soda uh, and salt to this, that's when we add a bit more water because the water that we added overnight has been soaked up by the chickpeas and we need more water. So instead of adding cold water now, I'm going to add one liter more of boiling water. And water is something you just keep an eye on this while it's cooking. If you think it's becoming too dry, then just add a couple of hundred ml of water. It's not going to make much of a difference, but it shouldn't dry out. Out. that's the key the water guideline is just as the name suggests a guideline so I'm gonna let this cook this should take around an hour an hour 15 minutes to cook somewhere between that right so these chickpeas have had 40 minutes and that's the beauty of overnight soaked you can see that these layers of chickpeas is coming apart which and look they're breaking up so I'm just gonna check Oh my god, it's super soft. So what I'm going to do is, now I'm going to take the tea bags out before they kind of tear and ruin my chickpeas. If you're not confident, you can put it in some fabric. And what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to add a little bit more water. Now water is totally up to you in Chole, how dry or wet you want. So there it is. And I'm going to let this simmer and bubble up. Let it continue to cook while I start preparing the masala. Now that the chickpeas are cooked and I'm going to start with the masala, you need two medium sized onions. I haven't got like smaller onions, so I'm just going to use whatever I have at home, but I need two of them. I'm going to finally chop this up. Going to start with a good glug of sunflower oil. I'm using four tablespoons here. Once it's piping hot, I'm going to add a cinnamon stick. Got some lovely cumin seeds, a teaspoon of that, and a teaspoon of carom seeds, which is a join. It's sizzling away and now go in the onions. And I'm going to cook this for eight to ten minutes. So we have got the chickpeas simmering away here. We've got the onions cooking here. So next is I'm going to get a nice big piece of ginger and good six to eight garlic cloves. And I'm going to finely chop all of this.
Once the garlic ginger is prepped, I'm also going to finely chop two lovely tomatoes. So these are looking super lovely. Look at that color. The smell is beautiful. Now I'm going to add the ginger and garlic. Give it two minutes to cook. Now goes in the tomato. So next goes in 200 ml of boiling water. Now I'm going to put a lid on this and cook for 25 minutes on low to medium heat, which is going to give us a lovely squishy masala. The reason for adding extra water is that the masala doesn't burn because we're cooking it for so much longer, like 20-25 minutes. Usually I would fry it for 10 minutes, but this is like a slow cooked chickpea curry and that's how it gets its immense deep flavor. So you can't skip this process and that's why adding water will ensure that you don't burn it. All that effort shouldn't go to waste. Right guys, time to add some full spices because this timer has gone off. And this is looking stunning. Adding the water has ensured this hasn't burned. Now I'm going to add some spices. So I'm going to start with a teaspoon of turmeric powder. Chili can be to taste. You can also add some lovely green chilies in here. I don't want it very spicy. So I'm just going to add some chili powder. And I'm going to add the two teaspoons of homemade garam masala. You can check out the recipe for this garam masala on my channel give it a good mix let it cook for a minute i'm just gonna check on the chickpeas which are nicely done too we took the tea bags out already but if you spot the black oh my god look at that so if you spot the three black cardamom that you have put in this is the time to take them out because they've done their job they've released the flavor they don't need to go into the main masala as you can see, the chickpea ah oh, couldn't be softer. It's too hot, right? So I'm going to transfer all of this into our lovely masala. Actually, I could, I should have just transferred the masala into this. Ah, silly me! All right, I found the third cardamom. Okay, let's just. Right, I'm gonna get this out of the way. Sometimes, seriously. Okay, let me try and... <sighs> Look at that. Look at that. You can never in a million years do this to a tin chickpea. You just can't. Okay, right. If you think you want more curry, you really don't because there is enough here. You can add more water. Actually, no, I might add 100 ml of boil. Always add boiling water at this stage, not cold water. Right, guys, we're coming close to the end. I'm adding 300 of, again, measurements are not important. You need to see how thick and or runny you want the curry, right? So I've added all the water, 300 ml. Give it a good mix. There is a small chance that by now your chickpeas haven't cooked through, which is absolutely fine. If they have, like mine have cooked through, because of that baking soda, it does help it cook quicker. Plus I had soaked it overnight. So they were already plumped up and swollen when I started cooking them. So it doesn't take that long. Mine have cooked a total of an hour so far. Now this is the time if they haven't cooked soft enough, cover and cook this on low heat till they are done. So it could take another half an hour, one hour. Mine are cooked, but I'm still going to give it a good 15 minutes because that is going to ensure that the chickpeas, because they're so soft and mushy, they're just going to absorb all the flavor. And the last little bit, is a handful of fresh coriander, obviously. And while I'm chopping this, I can hear the chickpeas bubbling away. So let's go and check up on them. Right guys, moment of truth. So just, it, it's been cooking on medium heat for 10 minutes. Oh, look at that. It's already broken. I just brought a <laughs> potato masher to mash it a little bit, but 
the chickpeas have softened up so much then some of them is broken but uh, actually I'm just still going to mash so all you have to do is not mash the whole thing just do it three to four times and just the last bit The smashing of the chickpeas is what makes it thicken up a little bit and that makes the texture really nice and creamy. Now is the time. So I've turned the heat off. Chickpeas are cooked. There's just enough amount of curry in there that I like. Now, if you can, I know it's tough and I know it's hard. If you can, just be a bit patient and leave it alone. Cover and leave it to sit for an hour, two hours, three hours, the texture will change even more and it'll become creamier, which is beautiful when you're eating it with naan or on top of some rice. I'm so hungry. So yeah, I am going to now plate this up and taste. And here, my friends, is a delicious chickpea curry or chole. Absolutely gorgeous. Now, things you can eat this with, if you are just kind of midweek or weekend, you can have this with plain rice, or you can please try it with the cumin rice that I shared a few weeks ago. The cumin rice is also in Indian feast. Oh my God, that combination is insane another way to eat this is with some piping hot puris or some lacha paratha oh, you can tell i'm getting hungry just thinking about it whatever you eat this with the main thing is that you give this a go this is absolutely piping hot because we've added so much water you might need to add a little bit more salt so please do taste it before you serve mm. Mm. Oh, that's beautiful. That's so comforting. That is just warmth in a bowl. I really hope you're going to give this a go. Don't forget to subscribe. Hope you're going to enjoy some delicious festive recipes coming up in the next few weeks. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Bye for now.